Hi, and welcome to a new episode of the Weekend Warriors Workshop. Um, it's been a while since I did anything. Uh, last series of videos I did had to do with screen printing and building a couple different presses. And uh, then I broke for the summer and I rode my bicycle and, and I went on vacation and hiked around Mammoth and just generally had a pretty darn good time all summer. And now it's time to get back into the wood shop. It's October, fall's here, which is woodworking time for me. And, uh, and uh, the Mrs. Warrior decided that she wanted new cupboards upstairs for uh, my grandson's room. We've got an apartment on top of our house. And uh, so she wants some storage space in there. And we decided on a design, and I'll show you a, a quick picture of that later. And I sketched it out. And uh, so now we're going to build it. And we're going to use something called pocket hole joinery. And what that is, it's it's... Screwing, or drilling some precision holes at an angle using a special screw that will pull up joints nice and tight. And it, it allows us to build pretty intricate designs while only using right angle cuts. So if you've got a circular saw and, a, uh, and a, uh, a guide, a guide jig, and some plywood, you can build all kinds of stuff with uh, pocket hole joinery. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going we're gonna to build my design and while we're at it we're going to look at a couple of the tools you need and see how strong a joint can be using pocket hole joinery. So let me get stuff set up and I'll get back to you and we'll do some of this stuff. Give me five. Okay here's the plan we're working with. Now it looks pretty simple and it is. What I have is two carcasses side by side. One there, one there, and then fill in between with a two foot section. These are 18 inch boxes, seven feet tall. Um, and this is a two foot section in the middle. Uh, lower sections are gonna have cabinet doors on them. I don't know if it's gonna be two doors or two doors or four doors. I haven't decided yet. Upper section, we're gonna leave open so it has bookshelves on either side and then a place to put a TV set because this is going into a bedroom. Uh, it's kind of an armoire built-in thing. Uh, there's going to be a hang place in this one for hanging shirts, etc. <coughs> anyway, so what I've got is I've already got this side built. Now we're going to work on this side. Um, and we're doing it all with pocket hole joinery. So there's no real fancy joints involved. And let me show you what we've done over here. Okay, here's the first carcass. This is the left side of my cabinet. And you see it is real simple, about seven feet tall, a lot taller than I am. My two foot upper section, then my two lower sections. I'll have another one just like this sitting off over here, and then I'll fill in in between with two foot shelves and, and a base and all that good kind of stuff. Um, <coughs> there's no fancy joinery done here. This is all done with pocket holes. Uh, so I've got my top shelf in screwed in from the top. You can't see the holes from, from where we're standing here. Uh, on each one, I've got a bracket that's going to mount into the wall nicely. Uh, so this is going to be my built-in. This is, this is the first half. Um, so now let's get to making the second half. Now, first thing i got to do is trim up the sides. I've got uh, a bunch of sheets of plywood that my boys and I have taken to my table saw and cut down to 18 inches wide. Uh, on each side. And now I need to cut them to length to the seven feet tall. Um, and then I need to make some shelves and basically I take the same same boards from the plywood and I just trim them down to 18. So I've got square 18 by 18 shelves. <coughs> and then of course a little support pieces for the bottom and all that. And then it's a quick assembly. Now inside here I've drilled holes to make for adjustable shelves and uh, I'll show you how I do that, how I set, set the depth even on each of those and how I lay them out. So let's get started and, uh, and uh, we'll continue on from there. See you in a second. Alright, here I'm ready to trim up the sides of my carcass. Uh, we're going to do it up to about 7 feet or since I'm working in metric, uh, 200 and 13.5 centimeters. So if I bring this up, 
you might be able to see this 213.5 and I'm going to use my uh, radial arm saw which is what, what we're mounted up here now a lot of times I will remove a guard or something just so you can get a better shot when I'm working with the radial arm there's no way I'm removing any of the safety gear from it uh, radial arms can be quite dangerous however they're great productive uh, tools so I love using my radial arm I just am very safe about it so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this cut now my radial arm won't take this in one pass because it's 18 inches wide and the most I can get is a 15 inch cut so I'm gonna have to take this in two passes which means I'm gonna flip the board over and uh, take a cut from the other side so we're just gonna go ahead and get started here and cover your ears Okay, now that's not too bad. And when you consider that this particular saw was built in about 1953, uh, I think I'm doing okay with it. This is the DeWalt Work Center, and uh, it hasn't been made since, I don't know, the mid-50s. I wish I could get all the parts for it. Okay, here we are again. Now, I've got my two sides cut down. I went ahead and I cut my four shelves. So I got all four shelves here, we'll put those aside. Now once you're done cutting the wood, as is common with pretty much any other project, uh, at least in woodworking, is your longest time is spent doing your layout for everything. And yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and, and lay things out. I want to have a two foot shelf at the top, and my top is way down here at this end, my bottom is at this end. I want to have a, a basically a kick plate. It's going to be a void at the bottom. Basically just to, to get it up off the floor about two and a half inches. Uh, and then I'm going to have two set shelves in between. And those are going to provide the structure for, for the project. So, you know, it can't collapse, fall apart, or anything like that. Because that would be bad. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to lay it out, plus I'm going to lay it out for the, uh, for the adjustable shelf holes. And then we're going to make pocket holes in all the pieces and put it together. So you watch. I'll lay out one side and then I'm going to kill the camera. So my first mark off here is at two feet. Now always remember, you want to measure it multiple times, especially if you're cutting, because it's okay to cut long, it's not too good to cut short. Okay. And then at about 207 centimeters, once again I tend to work in metric more often than anything else, because I find that to be the most accurate. 207 minus 70, let's see here, 207 minus 70 is 230, 237, yeah, 237, 237, there we go.
I want to start laying out for my, for my pegs that will go in my adjustable sections. So I want to lay out on each one. about six inches from the top of each shelf to start. And we'll do the same thing six inches from the bottom. Of the Let's face it, you're not going to have too many shelves that are under six inches in height. of lines. Now I might mention while I'm sitting here doing this that I've marked off the inside and outside of each of my, my side pieces just so I don't get confused while I'm assembling. So this one is marked with a left back arrow pointing toward the back side. This side is marked right back with an arrow pointing toward the back side. So when I'm assembling it, I don't get turned around or, or swung. Uh, quite often I'll also put an arrow up like that, indicating which way is up. smarter than me, you don't have to make those kind of reminders. And that means most of the population of the United States does not have to make those kind of markers. Okay, so for my adjustable shelves, my holes are going to range in these sections here, and then I'll put them four inches from either side. And this is set for four inches, so.
got that. Now we want to mark off these holes. Uh, where's my board? Now to mark off these holes, what I do is I take a piece of pegboard, your standard everyday normal pegboard that you would hang tools on, and I've got it marked off with some with some indicator markers. And I'm just going to lay it out here and get to where I can see my lines through one set of holes and find my corner points. Make sure I can find the next set of holes in there too. And I can see that just fine. And be sure I mark off where my start and finish lines are. lines I was looking for. Oh, and I can even see things centered up the way I would want them to be. Well, wonders never cease. And now I just have to find my center punch. I had it here a moment ago. Ah, there it is. Right where I can't lose it, it's on the floor. Okay, this is probably actually a leather punch. Uh, it came to me in a load of tools one day that my, my neighbor wanted to get rid of. But I find it very nice just for using as a center punch. It fits in this board nicely. And I've got every other hole. And there we go. All my holes are nicely laid out exactly where I want them to be. So now I just have to drill those. Now I am drilling to put this type of, of shelf holder on. Just a shelf hook. This guy is about 3 sixteenths of an inch. So I've got to drill 3 sixteenths holes. That's about 3 eighths deep. Now, I don't want to over drill, of course. I don't want to go too deep. So what I do is I take a dowel. I drill my hole through it, and then I set my drill into the drill, so I've got just the amount of protrusion I want through the, uh, through the dowel. Uh, I've made a nice set of these with tapered ends. I don't know what I did with them. I, uh, I put them someplace where I wouldn't lose them, and I lost them. But now all i got to do is Go ahead and, and I've got the right depth every single time. And I didn't spend a fortune on a bunch of drill stops or depth gauges. Just a piece of dowel cut to a length that will allow me to uh, protrude enough of the drill through. Enough of, the, enough of the bit through, I should say. Okay, now we're ready to start with the uh, making our pocket holes. And what I have in front of me here are two different pocket hole jigs that do pretty much the same thing. The one in front here is the Craig system. And... Uh, it's American made. It's a wonderful system. This is the master system, so it's got a kit with all kinds of goodies in it, including including a clamp for holding the wood together as you, as you secure it. Uh, the problem is the master system like this runs about $140. Uh, just the jig alone with the, with the drill bit runs about $100. Uh, and a good patriotic American like me should be running out and buying one of these. However, I haven't been able to afford the $140. Uh, 
for this system. The one back here is one I picked up at Harbor Freight. By the way, this is not mine. This is uh, one of my uh, son's friend's system. He's young, single, and has all kinds of money to throw around. Uh, the one back here I picked up at Harbor Freight for about $60. Now you'll see, by the way, the, uh, the creek design has changed, and it looks more like this one. Uh, it started like this, went to this with a handle in front so you didn't have to reach around your work to secure it. Uh, but I've looked on their website and it appears they've gone back to this because I guess it's it's stronger and easier to push instead of trying to pull the, the joint tight. Still, the best system on the market in my opinion. However, this one does the job once again for about half the price. Um, I do wish that I had one of these and when my, my son is building up his wood shop, he's going to get this one from me and this is the one I'm going to go get the next time. But they do the exact same thing. They, they put pocket holes in, which means they drill a perfect hole at the bright angle, perfect angle I should say, so you get the strongest joint with a screw, which makes it a lot easier when you're uh, building a quick project such as this one. Uh, I'm not having to make dado joints. I'm not having to use routers. And all I need to do on this is cut uh, square edges and drill holes and, and sink screws. Blue is even optional. So let's go ahead and, and drill some of these. Here's one of my shelves. It's all laid out. Uh, this is the, the top. So this is the top of the top. And in here I'm going to drill uh, six holes, uh, two inches from either edge and in the middle. So same thing on the other side. And then the undershelf support, I've got a screw for each end and then two six inches from each edge. So I'll knock these out real quick so you see what we're going to do. Then I'll kill the camera and, and start building. So it's real easy. You put it in the jig. Make it tight. And then select the right angle. Okay, and there I have three pocket holes. Now, somebody might be asking, Chris, why are you doing pocket holes? Why don't you just sink holes in from the side and, and straight into the edge of the board? Well, this is plywood, and going into the edge of plywood is like drilling into end grain or screwing into end grain. Not the strongest joint in the world. However, putting a hole at an angle, you catch the lip of each layer. You catch a part of each layer of the wood which will pull the joint up nice and tight. So, that's why pocket holes make such a strong joint. shelf and one back support ready to go in. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the rest of them. I've got three more shelves, three more supports, and then we can start piecing these things together. Now, like I said, if you have $140 or $100 for the bare bone system, 
this is the system to get right here. If you're on a real strict budget and you still need to do some building, you got to shop Chinese. Not great for our economy, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Uh, and then next time you go out and buy one, get the good one. So Harbor Freight and Salvage, uh, uh, $60. Or Craig Tool, by the way. Craig can be demonstrated or can be seen. Lots of videos and demonstrations and how-tos at www.craigtool.com. Highly recommend it. Uh, and that's about it for now. So I'm going to go ahead and knock out the rest of these shells, and next time you see me or hear from me, we'll be building. All right, I'm back. And now I've got all my pocket holes drilled, uh, so I'm ready to start assembling. Now what I've done here is I've taken one of my rear brackets, and I'm using it as a guide, basically. I've got a clamp to the wood. I've then clamped my, my shelf to the, uh, to the bracket. And it's set where I want it to be on the, uh, on the uh, side. So now it's just a matter of dropping some pocket screws into the pocket holes. And you'll notice these screws, they've got a nice flat bottom at the head. And they're also a square drive. My drill is now mounted with a, uh, a uh, pocket holing bit. And the idea is it lets you get out here and stand away from the wood so you're not marring the wood with the drill. And now, I'm just going to screw them in. And that is all there is to it. screws drew the wood real tight together. So, you know, that's a pretty darn strong joint for just being screws. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the shelves and I'm going to put the back supports on. Uh, I'll put the back supports on once I lay over the other side onto the, uh, onto the piece. So, the rest of the shelves and then we'll move on. So here we go. Here they are, all framed out, all cased up, ready for me to uh, start working on the center section here, and then get the trim around them, and then start working on doors and some more shells for in between. I got work to do still, but you can see these got built pretty quick. I mean, it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I started out here. I started taping about 11, uh, so this is about three, three and a half hours worth of work. Um, uh, 
Yeah, pocket hole joiner and makes it quick. Once again, I don't expect these things to stay up for 30 years. These are going up into the apartment, probably get remodeled in two or three years. And when it's time to do that, I'm going to be able to unattach them from the wall, take my screw gun, and break them down into pieces, have some good lumber instead of destroying them to get them out. Uh, that's it for now. I'll get back to you as I start building some more. Okay, I'm back, and it's base frame day. So what I've done so far is I've taken care of the edges and the two main cross pieces, and I'm putting in pieces for uh, the, the upper stays. And just like the rest of the, the project, I'm using pocket holes to assemble it. Now, what I've done here, I've got this big metal plate. It's nice and flat. So I've clamped this piece, and this piece down so I know that they're going to be flush with one another. I've marked my position. I've clamped them all into place. Now I'm ready to just sink some pocket screws in. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the pocket screws. And in they go. And now when I pull these apart and turn it over, I can feel they're nice and flush, just like I want them to be, and that's going to be the side that shows. You're not going to see any of the joinery, um, and it's going to be gorgeous when I'm done. So I'm going to continue on. I still have to put cross pieces across either side. Uh, I've got to finish out the top because there's a box here, and... Uh, then I can put it on the carcasses and you'll be able to see what it'll look like once it's going to be installed. Minus the doors, of course. So, I'll be back with you. Here is a completed face frame. Looking at the bottom and working our way up. I don't know how good my lighting is in here. Now, right now it's just dry fit. I haven't really fastened it down yet. But... It's looking pretty good. Ready for me to start on doors. I'll finish fixing this thing into place tomorrow and then I'll start working on the shaker doors. And uh, that's about it. So we'll see you uh, tomorrow.